So guys. we are going to move a little bit later from the late Bronze Age that we've seen so far. So we're going to talk a little bit about the first millennium. Um, this is part of a project about Abdirites in the northern part of the Aegean in Thrace. And uh, from the very beginning, this project wanted to trace both the Greek colonists and the Thracian uh, indigenous population and try to see the two different cultural groups and uh, compare uh, their settlement pattern and their way of life. Um, in, for that reason, we have done a systematic survey in four areas. Area A and B um, is um, in the coastal plain, and our plan was to trace the Greek colonists that had arrived and um, established a new colony, a new city in this area. Uh, area C and D, as you can see, is in the inland area, one in the flat uh, valley of the Xanthi uh, region, and one in the uh, Rhodopi Mountain, the only one uh, that has been conducted in this part of, the, uh, of Greece. Um, and we wanted to trace the Thracians and how they developed their uh, culture in these areas. Um, we found a lot of stuff. I'm not going to tell you numbers, they are very big. Uh, they range from uh, burial tumuli. We have found 140 of these things. They, are, they can be huge, I can tell you, and they are burial. Um, interestingly enough, the Greeks did them, uh, as opposed to the Thracians we expected. Uh, and a number of small and larger finds have been, have been collected in this, in this region. I'm going to tell you very brief things about them, but they give us a quite rich evidence from both uh, cultural groups. Now, uh, area A and B that I talked in the beginning, which are in the coastal area, it contain, they contain the area A, which is the urban area of uh, the city of Abdullah. It's one square kilometer. It's a big city for the time that it was established. Uh, and the rest is the area adjacent to it, which is the necropolis. But uh, in fact, we found far more interesting things that we uh, expected. Uh, areas C and D are the areas that uh, the, um, the Thracians we expected uh, to, to trace them. Unfortunately, the ancient sources are very limited. Um, area, they talk about tribal uh, areas, small settlements, and um, uh, low visibility was uh, expected. Now, uh, as far as visibility, uh, we had problems as in all surveys. I'm not going into details, but uh, we, try, we managed to, to find quite a few things. Um, starting from the beginning, uh, Abdira is a city that's established in the mid 7th century BC. Two colonization episodes, which is very, very uh, uh, rare case in the Aegean and in general. Uh, in the mid 7th century, people from Clazomenae in the Ionian uh, part of the, uh, of the Aegean move and establish Abdira. Um, Hundred years later, people from Teos, not far from Clanazom and I, make the same trip. Uh, unfortunately, the first um, colonists were not very successful, and the main reason was uh, the environment. There were a lot of mosquitoes, and uh, they killed uh, a very large number. 80% uh, of the burials we have from the mid 7th to the mid 6th belong to children, infants. In fact, from few long, few days old to one and a half years old. So they had a very serious problem. Later on, things seem to have changed. Um, now, both areas, this is an aerial picture of uh, the city of Abira. I'm afraid the sea was somewhere here at the time. Today it's uh, two kilometers inland, but this has nothing to do with our discussion. One of the first things that the people from Klazom and I do is make a wall. So they erect one of the first and earliest walls we have in the, in the Aegean world in the mid 7th century BC, uh, as far as the first millennium BC is concerned at least. Uh, and their reason is very good. Thracian tribes exist around them and what they want to do is protect themselves. So it seems that the relationship, they don't start uh, very well from the beginning. Uh, interestingly enough, 100 years later, the people from Teos that also colonized the same area the first thing they do is they remodel and they make a new wall to protect themselves again from the Thracians. So in 100 years, the relationship between the two cultural groups is not very clear what happened, but at least in some cases, they're hostile. Um, some historical sources tell us about burial, about warfare, like Pindar in the early 5th century. So the image we have is mainly hostilities. 
um, for this uh, early part of the, of the colonization episodes. Um, the survey has um, concentrated, first of all, in the city. We have done quite detailed analysis. We have quite a few uh, finds from this area, so we have a very clear image of what's going on. Um, and I'm going to concentrate mainly to the amphoras because they can give us a very clear view of the trade and the exchanges that are taking place in this period. Um, they are found all over the site, as you can see. They seem to have been used in secondary use in the household economy. In households seem to use them as containing jars. Uh, but the main concentrations are in the north and uh, southwest areas. These are where the port was located. In fact, we think we have a warehouse. Uh, here we have collected 3,000 toes only. I'm not counting the rest of the alphabet. So we have a very, very good uh, example of a big concentration of amphoras from this part uh, of the city. Um, and um, what we found out is that, uh, first of all, we found out that the Abdera produced its own amphoras, which we didn't know before, with own, its own style and with its own uh, seal, which is the, um, uh, the griffin, which is the symbol of the city. We know that from the coinage, so it's nothing new, but the amphora shapes are something new. And uh, at the same time, we found where the site of Avira imported uh, amphoras from and their produce. So um, we had many things from Thassos, amphoras, Maronia, and the Chalkidiki Peninsula. In fact, from this North Aegean area, 80% of the amphora comes from. So uh, trade is conducted with your neighbors your immediate neighbors. But we have also many materials from Lesbos, Ionia, Chios, Kos, and even Knidos to the south. Uh, in fact, this summer we found things from Rhodes, so these go southern. Um, from East Aegean, 20% of the amphoras um, are imported. So uh, north and east are the main areas where we have amphoras from, and trade is conducted from the late 6th until the late 4th century BC. Uh, in one or two cases, we even have from the Black Sea. So the exchange networks were extending further and further from this period on. So the Greeks, the Greek colonists were very, very um, happy and they had a lot of stuff uh, importing in their site. But what was very strange was that in the mid 5th century, we have records from the Athenian, um, from Athens. Uh, in fact, Abira was an Athenian ally, apparently, uh, and they paid the third highest tax from all the allies that Athens had. And we were wondering where they got this money from. I mean, they must have been very rich to have been taxed so heavily. And possibly the answer is partly in the slides I saw you before, with a lot of trade conducted in this important port, but also in this one, where we found metal slags. Uh, the area that Abdira commanded does not have any metals at all. But here we found three main areas of concentration. A lot of copper and iron slags have been located. This is close to what we believe is the north entrance of the city, and this is the port. Uh, so we believe that this is a result of trade and exchanges with the Thracians, which really control the mountains and all the ores of iron and uh, gold and silver and bronze that exist in this period. Uh, in fact, before our systematic survey, uh, the, the local archaeologist said that to us that we have never found any slags, there is no metal evidence in the city, so there is, you shouldn't expect anything like that. Uh, in fact, we found um, in this area and this area, we found uh, evidence of the kilns. So uh, things are coming, and in a couple of cases, we have found pieces that, they, according to specialists, come straight from the ores. They're not. Uh, manipulated in any uh, or processed in any other way. Uh, apart from that, uh, black glazed material of good quality, fine wares have been found. Uh, loom weights was part of the local e household economy, what you would expect from uh, a, Greek, a typical Greek city. Um, I'm afraid we looked at the cooking pots, we never found anything Thracian in that respect. We wanted very much, but we are not that lucky. Uh, looking outside the city now, uh, things changed rapidly, and that was very interesting because uh, the landscape concept was very, very different. Um, here are, in red, I have the highest concentrations outside the city, 
Um, this is the northern wall. There are some buildings and possibly some occupation just outside the wall, which it is um, in some cases known in Greek cities, but all the rest of the uh, red areas are very strange. Uh, I'll disregard this area because it's post, uh, post Byzantine and Ottoman in date, so it doesn't concern us. All the rest are uh, of the classical and Hellenistic period. Um, this becomes even more strange with the next slide which I have many triangles, yellow triangles. These are tumuli. There are 140 tumuli in this area. Uh, some are small, some are larger. But if you see very closely, the concentrations do not exist at, uh, on, the, on the burial tumuli. They're somewhat different. Um, this area is uh, where the tumuli exists is more than 2.5 kilometers. It's a huge necropolis. Uh, we believe that the concentrations represent farmsteads, that they coexist along with the tumuli. Uh, this is an unlike uh, um, uh, settlement pattern, because in Greece we learn that the, tumuli, the necropolis are always separate and well segregated from the living area. It doesn't happen in this area, and we have a couple of uh, old parallels uh, to support this. Um, so in this area, living area, burials coexist. This is something unique. We don't know if this uh, owes anything to the relation with the Thracians or not, but this is uh, an odd thing. Um, and part of that are the clay and stone sarcophagi. We found a large number of them uh, across this, this region. I'm not going to stay into this. Uh, moving to the area C, this is the area we expected to find the, the Thracians. Um, in most of the area we've we've covered, we we're very unlucky. We didn't find many things in general, not only Thracian. But when we start going to the northern part of this area, we found interesting concentrations and very big ones. Uh, this is part of a slope of hill, which is in this area. Um, and in this area as well, in the same hill, uh, two kilometers, I think it's one, 1 1.5 kilometer away, so it's two separate uh, concentrations. Um, they seem to be in a very strategic position with good visibility uh, and they are large, they are quite large, they are many hectares in size and that was very odd. Uh, and on top of that, when we start looking at this area that you see the, the blue dots, um, this is a, a riverside, a dry riverside, we found uh, by the riverbeds a lot of Thracian material. Um, interestingly enough, it was not only pottery that we found, but a lot of slags, metal slags, uh, and all these sites are next to the water. It seems that water was very important for their activities, everyday life, perhaps symbolic uh, in some ways uh, that we don't know yet. Um, some idea, just for you to have an idea of the difference of the, of the landscape, these are the slopes. Uh, this is the valley of Xanthi. Uh, you can barely see the riverbed I was telling you. All this area is full of Thracian material. Um, this this hill, uh, this mountain over here is Thassos Island, so they have great visibility many kilometers away. And Abdira, the city, the Greek city, just south of this low hill. Um, some, well, I couldn't call them structures exactly, but they were used in any way, natural or not. Uh, and it just shows you how different the landscape is in this area, where the um, settlement of the Thracians was developed. Um, still, a lot of stuff have been found on the uh, riverbed in this area, and it gives us a very, very um, clear view of what is going on. These are seven meters high uh, riverbeds, so we have a lot of alluvial um, alluvation that has covered much of the uh, classical period uh, strata. In fact, we found sherds sh of uh, Greek and Thracian period 1.5 to 2 meters below the current surface. So what we see is a very covered uh, alluvial plain. Still, we found a lot of stuff of Thracian and Greek, mainly Thracian, a little bit of Greek material. Um, moving to the area D on the mountain area, this was very interesting because um, we found evidence of Thracian material from the Late Bronze Age, early Iron Age, and in the first millennium BC. Uh, it seems that all this area was occupied. Um, for the interaction with the Greeks, just to say that in the 5th century we have a burial that the Athenian Lithos was located inside. Uh, in the 2nd century BC, Hellenistic period, 
under the Macedonian kingdom. There was a Macedonian type tomb of uh, this area, uh, which is typical and very good uh, copy of what uh, they did in the center of Macedonia. And thirdly, uh, in the Roman period, uh, all the finds suggest a very typical Roman site, uh, perhaps suggesting that the cultural interaction and adoption of different cultural elements moved gradually from the classical period to the Roman phase. Uh, just to conclude, the relationship between the two groups suggests that there were hostilities between the Greek colonists and the Thracian um, local population and the tribes. We have exchange and trade to a big extent, uh, especially metals, but also items that for the Thracian were considered or exotic or desirable uh, at any rate. And finally, we have cultural interactions, elements that the Thracians seemed to adopt slowly and gradually through the centuries until the Roman period. Thank you very much for your attention.